Look at it. <laughs> Such a mess. Because my eyebrows all night end up getting pushed the wrong direction. <laughs> Very, very cool. Good morning. It's another cold morning here. Um, the actual temperature was like nine point something, but the feels like temperature is two point something. <laughs> it's a big difference. Um, I was feeling. Here's Alexa. She says she's saying good morning. I'm gonna angle it so you can say hi with your face. Alexis is just waking up and she's chilling out for a little while. Um, yeah, I didn't realize that there could be such a big difference between the feels like and the the actual temperature. I learned something new every day, right? I, I noticed it like a week or so ago and was surprised at the difference. Um. Yes, we were toasty warm in bed. I didn't start to feel cold until I sat up and started doing some video, video editing. Um, I want to show you my hair. This is ridiculous. This is from wearing a beanie like almost constantly for the past two weeks. Look at it. <laughs> Such a mess. It's just ridiculous. I don't even know which way my hair's meant to go at the moment. Oh, it's caught up in my glasses as well. Huh? Yeah, Alexis has an interesting, interesting part that doesn't seem to have a particular way that it falls. So, yes, mine's being a bit like that at the moment. Um, I was also going to show you, sometimes in bed I've been um, uh, wearing my beanie because it's a bit cold. And um, uh, <coughs> when it's folded up when it's got the edge folded up. I'm trying to do it with one hand here so I can show you. It sometimes, because I've been wearing it so often, it sometimes starts to feel a little bit tight on my head. So when I've been wearing it in bed, <laughs> um, and also because it's like the double the bulk there and then also the seam here and everything, it's sort of, it's not comfortable on my ears, right? So I've been unfolding it and wearing it this certain way and I will get Alexis to hold the camera for you and show you because I haven't actually seen it myself but it must look ridiculous. So I unfold my beanie and I just put it right over my head like that <laughs> and because I don't like things over my nose or mouth I fold this bit up over my nose <laughs> so that my mouth and my nose are exposed <laughs> and it must look so silly. <laughs> It, it's actually really comfy, but the only thing that I don't like about it is that the inside seam here, uh, because it's slightly thicker on that spot, it rests right on my eyebrows. And if you've ever had long hair, you know, when you wear your hair up in a ponytail and like you've got it up all day or whatever, and then you let it down and all the, all the little hair follicles kind of scream because they've suddenly moved into like a completely different position, like the opposite from what they were. I get that with my eyebrows because my eyebrows all night end up getting pushed the wrong direction. <laughs> and then in the morning I have to smooth them across and it's like, ah, I don't like it. <laughs> anyway, that's, um, that's my beanie saga. <laughs> Check out these loos here. They have a squat toilet for people who are used to using squat toilets. That's brilliant. Squat toilets are honestly so much more healthy to use than sitting, but I'm not used to that, so let's go to one of these. Alexis suggested eating our brekkie outside the van this morning. So, um, we're in this park. Whoops. <laughs> it's a bit windy. Alexis is having to play on the playground before we go. She's growing up so fast, but not so fast that she doesn't still enjoy a playground.
<laughs> you good? <laughs> we are on our way to a place called Princetown, which is not far out of Port Campbell, and um, we're going to have a powered site for a night because without the solar panels on the roof, uh, we miss out on a lot of time where we can be getting power, which is unfortunate. Um, so yeah, and because we've only been driving fairly short distances daily, it's not been enough to top up the battery. So um, off to Port Campbell, we don't have much to do tonight, we'll just be resting mostly, which will be good. Alright, on to the next place. Okay. camp kitchen here and uh, it's toaster in the corner yeah I think it might be toasted muffins for Berkey just come out here for a walk there's the van and uh, walked past the playground and into the public recreation area so that's specifically campground and this is open to the public and it looks really cool it's super pretty so 
And the wind has dropped here, which is nice. <laughs> it's these wetlands over here. Some of the trees and stuff are really gorgeous. So beautiful. There is a little walkway over here leading to I don't know what. I'm trying to avoid stepping on all the kangaroo peas as I walk. It's probably futile because <laughs> there's, there's so much of it. I can't get over how gorgeous it is out here. Look at that. It's just beautiful. <laughs> Whatever you were eating. <laughs> You're keeping a close eye on me, aren't you? Fair enough. There we are. So these cute fuzzy pants of Alexis's. They are sloths in case you're wondering. Um, they're a bit too long and uh, unless she tucks them into her socks or the bottoms of her leggings they drag on the ground and so the other day there was a spotlight in town I think it was at Mount Gambia and I got some elastic so that I can put some elastic in the bottoms of the legs and I won't shorten them I'll just put the elastic in and then she can like pull it up just under her knee and it'll still hang to about the right length and that way she's getting them out of the way nice and easily um and I hadn't actually considered up to this point how I was going to thread the elastic through but I opened up my sewing kit just now and how well prepared am I that I packed a bodkin in it <laughs> This is for threading elastic and, you know, pants ties and things like that. So as well as wanting to put elastic through this uh, hem, I also needed to fix up the existing hem because um, being cheap pants, the overlocking didn't take long to come apart. So this entire edge of the hem had um, just fallen down. Well, so I will finish stitching so that there's just a small gap about up to here and then I'll put the elastic through and stitch it all up. I didn't used to like hand stitching but um, I actually find it kind of relaxing these days and uh, sitting here doing it with this view that I'm looking at at the side door it's pretty darn nice I must tell you. I'll show you the view that I can keep looking up at. It's so pretty and it's really peaceful out here. Can't hear any vehicles, just birds and wind. Look at that. And you might be able to see the kangaroos over there. There they are. 
can try and zoom in more, but the quality goes a bit crap. There we go. Hello, little kangaroos. So many of them. So this is how a bodkin works. You shove whatever you're trying to thread through in that big open end, and you squeeze it right up through there so it holds tight. And then you thread that through there. And well, using two hands is a lot easier, but you push it through until you get it back to where you need it. So, God, it's so hard doing this with one hand. Anyway, you can see that it's advancing through there. And see, there's the end of it. And it's already up to here. And eventually it comes back out the hole again. Welcome to Sewing Lessons with Coralie of Jump With No Fear. <laughs> Kangaroos are getting a bit closer to where our van is. So I'm just walking on the road back towards the van after I just used the bin here. And they, I don't know, I guess because we've been hanging out for a bit and haven't hassled them, they're not minding coming closer. Very, very cool. Sorry if the camera works dodgy. I'm trying to walk without stepping on fresh kangaroo poo. <laughs> Don't see any joeys in pouches from here. That's oh, probably the wrong season to be having babies. It's a bit cold. scratch. They don't seem to mind us now we're not approaching them. Oh no, I'll just have a look. There are some little ones though, but not little enough to be in pouches. anyway <laughs> I've seen some fairly decently sized young kangaroos in a pouch and it's like how on earth do they still fit in there so Alexis's pants are done you want to show me how they work now because they were super long before and we didn't want to remove the length because um she likes to have them so all the way over her feet when possible the there's the elastic there about halfway up her here. calf and then the rest can just dangle and it doesn't doesn't hit the ground and get stood on so just give your legs a little shimmy shake yeah there we go look at that perfect don't lose any length for tucking your feet all the way in when you want to and uh works awesome where are you going? You, you need to carry stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, come back. <laughs> mm, gorgeous view that I get just while I'm sitting here. Cooking. Nice, huh? So pretty. Tonight's dinner. Alexis has gyoza and I have her leftover sweet and sour thingy from the restaurant the other day plus a bit of added rice and the last of the tofu that I needed to use up and I'm eating it out of the fry pan because that means no extra dishes. Oh hello, did you find a grain of rice or something little birdie? Are you about to eat from that container? I should move that. Where are you 
I'm pretty sure I didn't leave any food on there. But you know, you, you do you, you explore. <laughs> you can't get into it because I put the lid on. <laughs> you bastard. Rude. Giving up, mum. Yeah, 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 I didn't leave any there for you, I'm sorry. Here we have kangaroos. All through there. My cool van. And check out the way the sunset is developing. Oh, it's looking so pretty. Look at that. This is my 360 view tonight. Back to the kangaroos. There's not much to hate about this. 